Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, let us say a word of prayer. So in reverence to our Heavenly Father, let us bow our head and let us pray. Abba Father, glorious and wonderful and awesome and magnificent God, we bless you. We honor you, we exalt you, we extol you. We thank you for your grace and your love and your goodness. We humble ourselves before you and we ask for your mercy and we pray that you forgive us. For whatsoever we have done, that you not honor you. For whatsoever we may have done, that you not glorify you. And may you wash us with the word of purification and sanctify us of blood, body, soul, and spirit. And we stand against Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth, we bind it and cast it into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, we bless you. Thank you for imparting understanding knowledge unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. So we would like to continue our main teaching about let my people go. Last week, we within the same main theme, we spoke about the sub theme neutralizing the Egyptian gods, uh, Hathor and Apis. And God, we saw how God plagued the Egyptian um, with a grievous rain, and, 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 and this caused the death of the livestock of the Egyptian. And we saw that the reason why God did that is because each one of these uh, gods. Egyptian god or false god were represented by bovine. The god, the goddess Happy, uh, the, the goddess Hathor was represented by a cow, and the goddess uh, Apis was represented by uh, an ox or a bull. Today, we want to speak about neutralizing the Egyptian goddess Isis, and we take our reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 9 verse 8 to 12. So I read the word of God in the book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 8 to 12 in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt and it shall be a ball breaking forth with blains upon men and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes out of of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and it became bold be breaking forth with blains upon men and upon beasts and the magician could not stand before Moses because of the balls for the ball was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he he can not unto them as the Lord had spoken unto Moses May the Lord bless His word, may it come full of understanding, revelation, blessing, grace, and life in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're speaking about neutralizing the Egyptian goddess Isis. The sixth plague of balls was not only a punishment against the Egyptian, but also it was a judgment against the Egyptian goddess Isis. For she was the goddess of magic, wisdom, and medicine or healing. Isis had many other facets in ancient Egypt, for she was also known as the wife and mourner goddess, as she, as she was mourning for her brother, who was also a husband named Osiris. She also um, was known as the mother goddess, as she was usually depicted by, Im by images of a woman holding a child in her hand or breastfeeding a child. This is represented, this represented as son. This child represented as son Harris. She also, she also known as the goddess of kingship and protection of the kingdom. Another uh, way she was called the sky goddess, as she was given an important position in the sky because of her many roles. And, and the the Egyptians also at time were calling her the universal goddess because it was believed that a sphere of influence could include the entire cosmos. The name Isis means throw. So a headdress, a headdress is a throne. As a personification of the throne, she was an important representation of Pharaoh's power. 
The Pharaoh was depicted as a child who sat on the throne she provided. Human beings have been made from the dust of the ground as well as animals. Even as the word of God says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 24 which says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 adds to say, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the ground was meant to be a blessing both for human beings and for animals by producing the, all the food that was necessary to them, even as God commanded in Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 to 30, which says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for, for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fall of the earth of the air and to every thing that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so so god has created the, the earth to be a blessing unto mankind to be a blessing unto animals. And, 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 and it is upon the earth that mankind and animals dwells. They dwell upon the earth. So the earth is, was meant to be a blessing unto mankind. But every time that human beings sin against God, it brings an unhappy, it brings an unhappy uh, outcomes. And as a result, the land becomes a curse to human beings. It's what happens to Adam and Eve when they sin against God. For the earth started to produce thorns and thistles. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 to 18, which says, And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearken unto the voice of your wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Thus is the ground for your sake, in sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistle shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the, uh, the, the herb of the field. The, the similar things happen when the people of Canaan sin against God. And they were driven out of the land of Canaan. And this is why God said unto, uh, unto the people of Israel through the, his servant Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 4, which says, Speak not though in your heart, after that the Lord your God has cast them out from before you, saying, For my righteousness the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of this nation, the Lord does drive them out from before you. So the reason why the nation of Canaan were driven out, they were they, they it, be, it was because of the wicked ways. It was because of the idolatrous ways. That is why God replaced them with the people of Israel. It also happened when the people of Israel sinned against God. And as a result, they were deported to the land of Israel in slavery in the land of Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 40 verse 1 to 3 which says this is God, um, this is what he says. He says, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, had led him, had let him to, had let him go from Rama when he had taken him being bound in chains among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, The Lord your God has pronounced this evil upon this place. Now the Lord has brought it and done according as he had said, because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed his voice. Therefore, this thing is come upon you. Yes, he was reminding Jeremiah of what Jeremiah prophesied against the people of Judah. 
to say that the people of the, the king of Babylon will come and take you out of this land and bring you into uh, and take you to Babylon in captivity and exactly what Jeremiah prophesied though people did not believe in him most of them they were not believing in him but it happened even as God spoke through Jeremiah indeed we can see that that when human beings sin against God the land where they live becomes a curse unto them this explains why God told Moses to take the ashes which became dust and then it caused balls upon the Egyptian this was a way to remind to the Egyptian and to all the nation of the earth that they are human beings made up by God from the dust of the earth. Hence, they ought to worship and honor the only true God, Yahweh, who is the creator of all things. And if they fail to do so, then the land from which God has made them would become a curse unto them. And again, by using the death to, 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 to punish the Egyptian, God Yahweh was reminding the Egyptian that they are only dust and ashes. In other terms, they are nothing before the only true God, the Creator. Thus, they ought to fear Him. This is why Abraham said to the following in Genesis chapter 18, verse 27, he said, And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. So Abraham knew and understood his position that he is nothing before God. He feared therefore God. And that is why Abraham was called the, the, the friend of God. Because he was walking in, in the fear of God. And this is the true meaning of the name of the very first human being, Adam. For the name Adam comes from the Hebrew word Adama which means ground or earth Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 to 2 which they say this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created so God called them Adam and this was a way, the way for God to remind Adam of where he has taken him from. Meaning from what Adam was created, which was from the dust of the ground, even as we have already read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And by giving the name Adam to the first human being, God is instructing every human being to be always humble before him. This is why the book of James chapter uh, 4 verse 6 and verse 10 say, But he gives more grace, wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Verse 10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. The book of Peter adds in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, to say, Humble yourself therefore unto the, under the mighty hand of God, and you sh uh, that he may exalt you in due time. Hence, when human beings rebel against God by sinning, in other terms, when they are expressing arrogant uh, uh, attitude, for when a person sins, it is another way to, uh, of saying to God that he does not need God. This is why the, the, the person disobeyed the instructions of God. For sin is simply disobeying the, com to, the, the commandments of God. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses the, the, also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Thus when a person commits sins, when the person commits sin, he is actually refusing to submit to God, his creator. He is refusing to submit to the authority of God. And as a result, the very same ground from which God had made him will now turn against such person in order to remind to the person from where God has taken him. Hence, by this, God will be teaching the person that he ought to be and remain always humble before God is creator. 
And this explains why God used ashes which become dust and the dust caused balls upon the Egyptian for ashes are a symbol of humiliation, a symbol of mourning. And this is why Job sat upon ashes when Satan smote him with sore balls over all, all, all over his body. Job chapter 2 verse 7 to 8 we say, So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore balls from the sole of his foot unto his crown, and he took him a pot shed to strap himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. And the friends of Job also sprinkled dust upon the head toward the heaven as they came to mourn with, with him to sympathize with his affliction. Job chapter 2 verse 11 to, to, to 12 which says, Now when Job's three friends heard all this evil that was come upon him, they came everyone from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shunachuite and so far the Naamite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him and they were and, and when they lifted up their eyes afar, they knew him not. They lifted up their voice and wept and they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Tamar, the daughter of, David, of King David, also put ashes upon her head as a sign of humiliation after her brother Absalom had raped her. Second Samuel chapter 13 verse 19 which says and Tamar put ashes on her head and rent a garment of diverse color, colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying because she was humiliated the prophet Daniel also put ashes upon himself as he was fasting, fasting and praying unto God in humiliation for the sins of the people of Judah which caused them to, to, to be deported in slavery in, to Babylon. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 to 3 which says, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the, the, word of the Lord came on to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem and I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So ashes are indeed or ashes and dust are indeed a sign of a symbol of humiliations, especially ashes. This is why many people may at time May at some point of their life experience serious difficulties when they rebel against God, when they show lack of humility, and they will experience difficulties and no things will work in their life. Or they, 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 they may experience their, their, their health failing them, and nothing will be helping. No matter what they will try, no matter which doctor they will go, it, the health will not improve at all. And until the person will understand and acknowledge by humbling himself completely before God, he will remain in such situation and may even die in such conditions. And this is why King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to learn as God humbled him and King Nebuchadnezzar ended up acknowledging God. Daniel chapter 4 verse 28 to 37 which says, And all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying O king Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken the kingdom is departed from you and they sh shall drive you from men and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make you to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass 
over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will the same hour was the, the, the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and it was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles feathers and his nails like birds claws and at the time at the end of the days I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and i bless the most high and i praise and honor him that lives for heaven whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed are reputed as nothing and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay in his hand glory and all or say unto him what do you do at the same time my reason returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and my brightness return unto me and my counselor and my lord sought unto me and i was established in my kingdom and an excellent majesty was added unto me now i nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride is able to abase and this is the reason why god is about to pour his holy spirit in these last days upon all those who are walking in sincere humility before him upon all those who have understood by turning away from their arrogance or their pride and they are now walking in genuine meekness of heart in genuine humility God will pour his spirit upon them this is exactly what God has spoken through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to 7 which says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek in other words, unto the humble he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes beauty instead of humiliation you know the all of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the law that he might be glorified and they shall be they shall build the old westings they shall raise up the former desolation they shall repair the west cities the desolations of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sounds of the alien shall be your plowmen and your wine and your vine dressers but you shall be named the priests of the lord men shall come shall call you the ministers of your god you shall eat of the riches of the gentiles of the gentiles in and in their glory shall you boast yourselves for you for your shame you shall have double and for your confusion they shall rejoice in the portion therefore in the land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them god brought balls upon the egyptians and there was nothing that they could do to help themselves Neither was their false goddess Isis able to cure them despite the fact that the Egyptians believed her to be the goddess of medicine and magic. 
the Egyptian magician could not even present themselves before Moses and Aaron. But the magician were also stricken with bones all over the body. This was indeed telling to the Egyptian that the goddess Isis was powerless before the god Yahweh and that she was not the true God and therefore she did not deserve to be worshipped but only the God of the Hebrew people the God Yahweh is the only true God and he alone ought to be worshipped by these things God Yahweh had indeed neutralized the false Egyptian goddess Isis for only the God Yahweh can truly heal can truly heal and there is no magic that can stand before him because of because all power belongs to him even as he stated in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39 he says see now that I even I I am he and there is no God with me I kill and I make a life I wound and I heal neither is there any that can deliver out of my head by this plague, God also 